I'd like to bring you a thought that's been on my heart for the last few days. It's not going to be a, a lengthy message by no means, uh, but it's going to be an important message and very timely, as they say out there in the convention. Luke chapter number 6. Luke chapter 6, verse number 47. Uh, this this um, scripture is referring to mostly to a, a man's life or an individual's life, but we're going to let it refer to your your home this morning and use it in that sense. Luke chapter 6 and verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. I want to preach our homes this morning. Uh, husbands, wives, kids, family. And preach on this morning, is your home on the rock or is your home on the rocks? Is your home on the rock or is your home on the rocks? I have many times counseled with people and they'll say, Preacher, Pray for us, our home on the rocks. And what they mean by that is, it's just about tore all to pieces. The devil has almost successfully destroyed another family and tore up a home. Now, in by way of introduction this morning, I want to say the Bible teaches that God wants every man to have three homes. Number one, you ought to have a family, a church, a family home. You ought to... A, a, a man, a woman, children. There's nothing in the world uh, as peaceful and sweet as a good Christian home. And God wants you to have a home. He wants you to have a home. Many people are what we call homeless. And that means they don't have a, a structured house where they live in. But it's sad that many people um, who, who are married uh, don't have the right kind of home. God wants you to have a family, to have a home. There are exceptions. Sometimes people are without a home, without a family. That don't mean you're not a Christian or can't be saved, but it's God's perfect plan for every man to have a home. And then secondly, God wants you to have a church home. I believe the Bible teaches God puts church, local churches all over this world like salt scattered on like a piece of, of, of meat or food, salt scattered. We're the salt of the earth. And God puts churches all over this world and he wants you and I to have a church home. There's a lot of people that are what we call drifters. I, a lady told me one night, she said, ah, preacher, I don't have no one certain church. I just go get up on Sunday morning and go wherever I feel led. And, that, and the reason they say that is because they don't want to commit to anything. We're living in a generation that don't want to commit to nothing. But you need a church home. You need a church body of brothers and sisters that you're a part of, that, that helps you, that you get your, your spiritual food from, that encourages you, that, that uh, either at a funeral when someone dies, at a wedding when somebody gets married, uh, uh, to encourage you on a weekly basis. We all need a church home. I am a firm believer in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, preaching church as a church family and raise your kids in a Bible preaching in church. You cannot improve on that. I've, I've raised kids and helped raise a million more, it seems like, and I'm telling you, you cannot improve on keeping them faithfully in a Bible-believing church regularly where they can hear the Word of God, where they can get familiar with people and, uh, and, and get the things that God would have them to do. That's right. Uh, there are people who, who drive uh, an hour here every Sunday just to come to our church. I wish you could see if, you, if, if you'd take it right, I'd bring some of the emails that we get of people to, in, in California, in Nevada, down up in, in, in Michigan, uh, out west, in Ireland, in England, in Africa, in Australia, 
all the time and said, you people are so thankful. If we had a church like that here, we'd never... Mi- I mean, think about that. I mean, we ain't perfect by no means. But I'll tell you one thing, they don't have this everywhere in this world. And we ought to thank God that we've got a church home. Amen? This is my church home. This right here, Shining Light Baptist Church. I go visit other churches. I go preach in other churches. But this is my church church home. Every man needs a home at home. Every man needs a church home. And then every man thirdly needs a heavenly home. You need to know my heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. You need to have your reservations made for heaven whenever you leave this world. None of us know when we're leaving this world. We don't know if it might be today, tomorrow, or this week sometime. But I've done got my reservation made. It's put in up there. When I go off on trips and I fly on an airplane, we have to call ahead of time and make reservations. So when I get there, you don't just get there and say, I want to get on this plane. Uh, You should have made your reservation. You have a ticket, it's paid for, it's bought, and they let you on the plane. I'm telling you, one of these days, I'm going to go down, as they say, to cross Chile, Jordan. And when I do that, brother, uh, the angel will take my hand, and I'll say, my my reservations have been made. I put them in back when I was 18 years old, and thank God the Lord has me a heavenly home. So you should make sure you have all three of of those homes. Now that being said this morning, I want to say three things about your home being on the rock or being on the rocks. Number one, I'm going to talk about the duties of parents to children. You have three major duties to your child. If you are a parent here this morning, even if you're not a biological parent and you're, you're raising kids uh, that are not physically, biologically yours, uh, maybe you're as a grandparent or a foster parent or whatever, you have an obligation, you have three duties for your child. Are you listening? Every man, every woman in here, you have, you have three duties. Number one, you have a duty to love them. Number two, you have a duty to discipline them. And number three, you have a duty to be an example for them. All three of those things. That's your duty before God. You have a duty to love your children. You wouldn't think a man have to say that, would you? Um, you'd think that loving your children is something that comes natural. And it does. But we're living in a society that's so wicked and so self-centered and so consumed with self and the lust of the flesh and pleasing the self that many people don't even love their own children. You know, you take animals, you take a, a dog, you try to steal them, them puppies and watch what that mom will do. She'll fight you. They say that, that you try, if a chicken has some baby chicks and you try to steal one of them chicks, she'll claw your eyes out uh, to try to fight you till you kill her uh, to protect her baby. Isn't it sad that human beings have sunk to the point where they throw babies in the trash can, where they throw I heard about one that not long ago who delivered a baby in the back seat of, a, of, a, of an automobile and threw it in the dumpster and kept going on down the road. I don't want a, I don't want a baby to be in the way. I want to party. I want to live my life. I'm gonna, I want to live it. I want to I I get rid of it. I don't want no baby messing up my life. I'm telling you, we're living in a time uh, uh, when people don't even love their own children. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to realize, now if you're a parent this morning, you need to realize that your child has separate needs from what you do and it's your job to meet it and not want nothing in return. And you're not doing it to get something in return. You're doing it because God said to do it. I meet people all the time and say, after all I've done for that little brat and they don't do nothing for me. No, that ain't why you do it. Now, it's good if you do get something in return, some respect, some honor, stuff like that. But if you don't, you serve God and love that child. Then you know what else you need to do? Your duty to your children is discipline them. I know we're living in a time when discipline of children is looked upon as as uh, barbaric, it's looked upon as old-fashioned, as silly as them old crazy times when people didn't know what they were doing. And I know that people abuse that, and I know some people are mean to kids and abuse. And I think that's terrible. Anybody who's mean to a child or abuse a kid ought to be put in under the jail. Amen. I'm not talking about that. But if you are the right kind of parent, you will exercise correct and 
a biblical discipline upon your children. You say, well, because people don't believe like that no more. Well, proof's in the pudding. Look at this generation of kids now and look at how people used to be. I mean, people used to respect their elders. People used to respect mama, respect grandpa and grandma. But now, good Lord, I meet people all the time saying, well, we can't come to church, preacher. I say, why? Well, this and here, she's in them twosies and threesies and, and, and we can't do nothing with her. I, I would hate to think that I had a three-year-old kid that was already so out of control that they control what the house does and what the house don't. Let me tell you something this morning. Your Bible, your Bible that tells you there's a God, your Bible that tells you there's a heaven, your Bible that tells you Jesus died for you also tells you that if you spare that rod, that's that hickory switch, that you hate that child. And we're, listen, we're living in a time when people just to keep from being bothered with them, just say, I don't care what you do, just leave me alone, get out of my hair. I've had kids tell me that. They say, my mama told me that, Brother Danny. I don't care, stay up all night, I don't care, just leave us alone. Lock the door, turn the TV on. If you want, I don't care what you watch, what you see. We was out on bus route yesterday, yesterday, me and Ethan, and we knocked on more than one door, more than one. When the came door said, uh, they're not up yet. They're not up yet. It's 11.30. It's 12 o'clock on a beautiful day like this right here. Listen, if you can't get out of bed, that, there's something wrong with a parent. There's something wrong with a parent somewhere. One kid told me, they said, I can't go to sleep. You get up 6.30 tomorrow morning and run outside and play all day long and go to bed. You'll get up that next morning. Uh, you'll be able to go to sleep tomorrow night and get up the next morning. Amen? That's right. We need to discipline them. We need to discipline them. Old Spock wrote that book, you know, uh, against spanking children, and somebody said, old Spock ought to be spanked. I, I guess that's right. Amen? That's probably what's wrong with him. Uh, one, one kid was so mean one time, come in one time, and, uh, and he said, but mama, we're under grace. And mama said, if you wasn't under grace, you'd be underground. <laughs> That's the way you feel sometimes. That's the way you feel like sometimes. Ain't that right? Uh, but the Bible said, we'll not spoil that child. You'll ruin that child. You'll mess up that child. I heard about these two little girls that was out playing. And uh, one of them said, uh, come on, let's go over here and play. Let's go over here and play. And they kept going further. She said, why are we going so far away? She said, that way if mama calls me, I can't hear her. And that's the way kids are. They're a lot smarter. They manipulate you if you ain't real careful. They'll put psychology on you. They'll do reverse psychology, make you feel guilty. They're smarter than you think they are, them little brats. I mean, they, they got human nature just like me and you got. They'll finagle around and they'll con you. And boy, they'll, they'll try, try to manipulate you. If they find out mama will take their side, they'll go to mama. If they find out daddy's on their side, they'll go to daddy and pit them against each other. They're, they're mean little boogers. I'm t uh, I was at Walmart one day and uh, I'm a preacher wherever I go, right? supposed to be. Man ain't a preacher everywhere he goes ain't a real preacher. So I'm a preacher I preach wherever I go. If it's playing ball if it's out digging a ditch or whatever and this girl, uh, this little kid was over here pitching a fit just ah! 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 Mom said come on baby come on baby. We're going to have time out we're going to have time out. That time out's really working good isn't it? You know why? Because that ain't of God. Time out ain't of God. It sure ain't. Uh, that's how far we've got from the Bible. And I said, I know what that kid needs. He needs good spanking. That's a preacher coming out in me. I'm sorry. And this, and this girl working the cash register, she said, she said, I've got good kids. I've never had to spank my kids. And the pre it come out, I could feel it. Blah, 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 blah. And I thought, be nice, be nice, be nice. And I said, lady, they ain't never been but one kid on this earth that didn't need a spanking. And it wasn't yours. And it wasn't mine. Somebody tell me who it was. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. Every other child that's walked on this earth needed it sometime, some way. Get you one about as big as that right there. Put it up on the refrigerator. And use it when you have to. Amen? You said, but then I read this book and it said that that would teach them violence. Well, I read this book and it said it, the foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from them. That's right. And, and, and that's, you, look at this generation. Look at them. I'm not talking, listen, good Christian families are better than their kids in that wicked world out there. Don't you talk to me? I think child abuse. Uh, a, a correct biblical 
Discipline is not child abuse. It's child abuse if you let them go and do whatever they want without correcting them. Amen? Amen? Somebody said, uh, uh, yeah, I, one of my favorite poems, I, I love it. It says, Junior bit the meter man. Junior kicked the cook. See, Junior's antisocial now, according to the book. Junior smashed the clock and lamp. Junior whacked the tree. Destructive trends are treated in chapters 2 and 3. Then Junior threw his milk at mom. Junior cried for more. Notes on self-assertiveness, you find that in chapter 4. Junior got in grandpa's room, tore up his fishing line. That's just to gain attention. See page 89. And grandpa grabbed a belt and yanked Junior across his knee. Because grandpa ain't read a book since 1893. <laughs> I like that. I, I'm, of all my poems, that's one of my favorite ones. I think about that a lot. Listen, them old timers, they, they believed in doing what God said about them. You're not going to hurt them. You're not going to kill them. In love, you know what I used to do when I spanked my girls? I'd say, now look, don't do it when you're mad. Don't do it because you got a headache and they got on your nerves. Don't do it because uh, you, you want to watch something on TV and they're bothering you. That's the wrong time to do it. Do it when it's necessary and have a talk with them. Say, now, honey, I love you. I, don't, I, don't give them, I never did give my next speech of this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I mean, I heard a guy tell that kid one time, and he said, uh, this is going to hurt me a lot more than it hurts you, son. He said, well, give me that belt. We'll see who it hurts worst. <laughs> so I never gave him that speech. I said, uh, I mean, it does hurt me, but not that much. And uh, actually, it felt good a time or two. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you need <laughs> I'm right, that's wrong. I'm sorry. But anyway, when we get done, we pray, and we ask the Lord to help us, and I say, and then I feel sorry for them, you know, and I go through all that. Especially I had girls, you know, and you, you're just more tender with girls, I reckon. I don't know. The old good-for-nothing boy, you, you, he'd be rough on him, but them, man, them little girls will break your heart, and you have to beware against that. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's the duty of a parent towards a child. And then you're to be an example, you're to be an example for, for your children. You're to be an example for them. You, you can't say, do as I say, don't do as I do. Uh, I do this, but if I catch you doing it, that ain't no way to be a parent. You have a duty. Hey, you're not a kid no more. You men, you, like, you are not a child anymore. I don't care what's happened to you before. It's, there's a time when you have to grow up, be a man, grow up, be a woman, and take responsibility. Man, I'll never forget my, when, when Carrie, the first, when she was first born, when I was 20, she's older than I am now. Uh, but um, She's probably watching this right now. Uh, but anyway, it, it seems like a long time ago, I was 21 maybe, and I thought, you talk about some growing up? When I looked down there and seen that baby, I thought, now, yeah, boy, you ain't no kid no more. You're responsible for their food, for their clothes, for their, their place to live. I've done, done a whole lot of growing up in about five minutes. Playtime's over. You are an adult. You have a responsibility when you have a child. Number two, I talked about the duties of parents to children. Number two, let's talk about the duties of a husband and wife to each other. Now the Bible said in Ephesians 5, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And the Bible said, they'll let the wife see that she reverend her husband. I know people, they hate that. They fuss and argue. They raise cane. They stomp their feet. Listen, I didn't write it, but I got enough sense to know one thing. If God said it, it's the best way to live. And a man who will put it on her, his family and love his wife, be willing to give himself for her, will be a blessed man. And a woman who honors and respects her husband will be a blessed woman. You'll never be blessed saying, I ain't doing that. I'm going to live my... One man told me, uh, several men have told me, they'll say, well, she don't deserve to be loved like Christ loved the church. She don't deserve it. And I said, you're absolutely right. And we don't deserve him to love us like he loved us. You don't do it because they deserve it. You do it because God commanded us to. You say, when she deserves it, I'll do it. No, the Lord loved us and gave himself for us. None of us deserve it. Still don't. You say, well, when he starts acting like the Lord, I'll respect him. No, you can use excuse forever. None of us, the Lord, you're supposed to respect him, honor him, do it right. Lord have mercy. I know, I know, I know. You say, well, well, well she's changed. I reckon. You reckon? 
I mean, duh, you think you're going to stay that way forever? Okay, guy said, he said they found it. He's changing, he's, he's losing all his hair. And he said they found out somebody had done this. I don't know if it's true or not. That's what he said. He said they had done a study now where they can, they can take hair out of your armpit. I'm telling the truth. And transplant it on, on your forehead. And it'll grow. Ugh! It don't even look the same, that hair, as that hair. Some weird looking hair you got coming out there. I wonder if it's, I mean, you have to put a band. Or, uh, every time you hug somebody, you say, man, your head smells like your armpit, dude. I, I, don't know if it, uh, I don't know if it's that way or not, but, I mean, we change. We get old, right? We get old. If you get past a certain age, everything falls out, falls off, or falls down. Gravity finally wins. You just start sagging. Have you noticed you're sagging lately? Is anybody? I ain't going to go into all that. But I'm, you start sagging, brother. Listen, we don't, we don't, we don't re- stay married because they stay looking a certain way. You don't, marriage isn't just, oh, wow, baby. You're good. You know, no, I mean, that's, that's where it's supposed to start sometimes. But ladies and gentlemen, it is a commitment. It's a commitment. Get this through your head. Marriage is a commitment. You say, well, I'm tired of this and I ain't going to live like... You don't do your kids like that. Do you want me to tell you why people can't... You know, people go from church to church. People go from job to job. People go from house to house. And they go from relationship to relationship. First time any little thing don't go like they like it, bam, we're out. Why they can't keep a job? Why they can't keep a church? Why they can't keep a wife? Why they can't keep? I'm telling you this morning, we, we are to be committed. Get it through your head. You are committed to your family, men. You're committed. If things go bad, I'm still committed. If things now, there's certain circumstances that makes it impossible to to carry on. I understand that. I got it. But you know what I'm talking about. Under mo- normal circumstances, you stay in there. You hang in there. You serve God. I'm telling you, brother, you love the Lord. One lady said, she said, my husband, Samin, said he goes out in the parking lot of Walmart and throws Mexican jumping beans with pigeons. Said, Ooh. That's off. One guy said, some of y'all didn't even get that. I reckon. Uh, so one guy said, uh, See, a pigeon, brother, it looks like he's in a, some kind of weird church meeting if they've got them Mexican junk meetings in them. One guy said, uh, we couldn't stay together. We had our religious differences. And they said, what's that? And he said, she worshiped money and I ain't got none. <laughs> that's right. One lady said, she says, you don't deserve a wife like me. He said, that's right. I don't deserve this bad back I got neither, but I reckon I'll take it. Now, the truth is, the truth is, you love and respect each other. Cooperation, affection, 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 affection. The lady said she wrote this Lonely Hearts Club. She wrote the Lonely Hearts Club letter, a letter, and they sent her back a letter and said, we're not that lonely. <laughs> That's bad, ain't it? But anyway, you have affection. Show affection. Show affection. Show affection. Then cooperation. 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 Cooperate. Can, any, can everybody here that's married tell me that don't you have to cooperate with each other? I mean, it don't always go your way. It don't always go her way. It don't always go his way. You have to give in. I mean, anybody with a brain in their head knows that you've got to do some giving. You've got to do some giving. You, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. You, you give, you get, you give. You, take. Uh, you know what some people want? They want all the privileges of being married, but none of the responsibilities of being married. That's our problem with our younger generation coming up. Our younger generation's coming up thinking, I don't have to do nothing. They've been taught that all their life. I, if something don't lie, I don't like it. I don't have to do it. If, something, if I don't want to go, I don't have to go. If I don't want to do this, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do nothing that displeases me. We are raising a generation that thinks that you're never supposed to sacrifice, never supposed to pay a price, never give in, never work hard, never. We're killing our generation, brother. Our families, we need to have some commitment. I, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. We take these kids on a trip, and I ask them who lives with their real mom and daddy in about... One third raises her hand. And I'm not fussing. I mean, it can't be helped sometimes. And, and it's not their fault. And then there's a stepdad or a stepmom, and they don't like them. 
and then next, then there's trouble there, and then there's all kinds of all kind of weird stuff going on. The duties of a husband and wife to each other. Number three, and I'm through. The duties of the entire family toward God. Your whole family has some responsibilities to God. Number one, you should have a family altar. Church should not be the only place your family ever prays. The old saying is, the family that prays together stays together. And that's a lot true. They, they've done surveys. They say families who pray together on a regular basis have a far less chance of divorce and all that. I'm not, I'm not fussing at you if you've been through a divorce. You know, I mean, I'm the last person that would fuss at you for that. We know how that is. I've been through it millions of times, it seems like, with people down through the years over and over and over. I am not fussing at you. If you've been through a divorce and you've been through marriage problems, the best thing for you to do is pay your debts apologize to everybody involved, make the best out of your life from here on. Honor God and do right from here on, right? Make the best out of your situation. I'm trying to help some of these young people never to have to go through that. The duties is a family altar. Pray together, pray together. Don't say, well, let's just send the kids in there and lock the door and let them watch TV and then we'll go somewhere or something like that. Listen, gather them, uh, them, them, uh, when uh, Kelly gets Ethan and Molly together and they pray with them and she prays with them and, and Molly's into this big thing of, of, of the peak and pit and she said, we got to tell the peak and pit. We got to tell the peak and pit. Peak and pit. And I said, oh God, we have to go through all this. I, I just want to pray and go and do what I'm doing, you know. But she's always into this peak and pit. That means, what is the peak of your day? What was the peak of your day, Brother Danny? And I said, when the Lord blessed me. What was the pit of your day? And I say, having to listen to you, Marty. And, 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 and then she'll, she'll mm, like, <laughs> and I said, no, uh, but yeah, each one goes around and tells the peak and pit of your day. And I always say, when the Lord does it, when the Lord, the peak of every day is when God does something for you. Got to go to church. I got to pray with somebody. I got to witness somebody. That's the peak. And, the, and then you pray. You would be surprised what that does in a child's life. The last thing they hear before they go to sleep, is in Jesus' name, amen. Don't tell me that don't have an effect on them. Don't tell them. You know whose responsibility that is, mainly? It's you men. It's you men. If you've got a man that won't do it, then ladies, you have to do it yourself, but do it. Do it. Family altar. And then, we have an obligation to God to have our family in church. Daddy, again, this is your job. Make sure you're family. If you've got a wife that won't come, that does happen sometimes, you go on and do the best you can. Mom and dad and kids go to church. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, uh, uh, you, you say, well, I, took a, I, 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 go, I get so aggravated with people now. They say, well, I'm in college now, and they're, they're giving us a psychology class, and they're telling us uh, why our country's in the mess it is and why there's so many suicides. You want me to tell you what psychology is? I'll give you a course in psychology in 10 seconds. You ready? Start and time me. Philosophy, philosophy, psychology is basically how to figure out how to live without God and do what you want to without feeling guilty. I'm going to tell you, you can't live like that. You've got a God consciousness. You're responsible to God, people. You're going to face Him one day. You're going to meet Him. See Him with your eyes. Stand before Him. and Give an account of your family. Every member of the family be saved. If I, if I were you as a parent, I wouldn't quit praying until I knew everybody in my family was saved. Don't give up. If you've got one you got doubts about, you know, me, with preacher's kids, it's tough because they grow up in church. They see people, they get saved young. Many people make professions when they're young and I, I'm not the judge. I don't know who's real and who ain't. If they mean it, they're saved. I think some people get confused over that. I think they hear people's testimony and they think, well, maybe I'm not really, you know, you can't start going like that because you'll get, maybe you're not really saved the next time, or the next, the next, the next. But nail it down. Nail it down. Get it right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Settle it. And then walk on and serve God. Make sure. Listen, it's not wrong. It's not wrong for you moms and dads to talk to your children about being saved. I didn't say push them. People say, well, I just don't think that's something you should discuss. Let them make up their own mind. They don't make up their own mind if they go to school. They don't make up their own mind if they go, brush their teeth. And going to hell is a lot worse than not brushing your teeth. 
you have a responsibility to make sure your family's safe. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is your home on the rocks or is it on the rock? You know how to stay married? Learn how to forgive each other all the time. All the time. Let it go. Wipe the slate clean, start all over. Wipe the slate clean, start all over. If you start holding grudges, it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And then one day, the devil sends something else. What's, is your home on the rocks? I don't think it hurt every married couple in here this morning to just squeeze that hand and say, Honey, I love you. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to our marriage, our home. I ain't perfect. But by God's grace, you know, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick this thing out and serve God. I understand there's circumstances where you can't. I got it. Don't, don't say, well, Brother Danny, I couldn't help it. I ain't, I ain't even talking about that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a marriage where you can stay in and be committed to it. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our heads bowed.